This morning I have entitled um, my talk on what is man. That's what the Bible says. That phrase is taken from the Bible. Have you ever been in the presence of somebody who is very influential, whom you consider a great person? How do you feel? When I was in, I went to preach in Kenya, <clears throat> the high court judge invited me to his home for a meal. It was a big mansion. Walking into his place, sitting at his table, seeing all the servants that were serving him, I felt so small in front of him. Then I went to Zambia on few occasions to preach. The, the again another high court judge was invite took me to an Indian hotel and the way he treated me I felt so small in front of these big people. Then the present the present president of Zambia he attended my camp meeting when he was in the opposition party a few years ago, and one of the MPs introduced me to him, and he came and he with his wife and they sat with me and they spoke with me. And I felt so small standing or being in the presence of these great people. Of course, in India, even I had some similar experiences sitting with great people whom we consider by their position and power. And I felt, wow, what a privilege it is. When I went to preach in South Africa, the local news came to interview me and, you know, live telecast and put me in their newspaper when I saw myself there. In the news, I felt so small. Many things like this happened in my life and made me think where I come from and what is happening. How small I am in terms of all these great people that God gave me an opportunity to sit along with them and be of some uh, use. Psalmist, look at this. He's comparing himself to something else that we hardly do it. That's what I want to share today. I, what I spoke about is comparing myself with another human being who is great in power, great in position. But the psalmist is comparing man to something that I don't know if you have ever compared or not. Let's see what he says. Psalms chapter 8 verse 3 and 4. He says, when I observe what? Your heavens. <clears throat> the work of your fingers. The moon and the stars which you set in place. What is man that you remember him? The son of man that you look after him. Psalmist is not comparing to another king or another nation. He's comparing himself with the universe. And he says when he looks at the stars, the sun and the moon and the creation and then looks at himself, he says he he can't even imagine such a huge universe and yet God is interested in this man. Let's look at, I know you are, you are college students, you might have some knowledge of this, but look at this presentation and let's now compare ourselves to the entire creation and see is there any significance of human life. For example, the universe. Um, all of us know the speed is usually set at 186,000 miles per second. That's what the speed is, isn't it? So, but the question is, what is 186,000 miles per second is a bit difficult to understand. How much is the distance? How can you calculate? How can you say in one second, this much is the travel that took you to 186,000 miles per second? Somebody illustrated, suppose you're standing on top of the earth at point, the tip of the earth at one point, and you have a bullet or a gun, and you're trying to shoot the bullet from the gun, uh, it, and it is traveling at the speed of 186,000 miles per second. If that's what is the speed, how many rounds it would go around the earth in one second at the speed of 186,000 miles per second? How many times do you think? It says, if it goes round like this, round the earth, in a one second, it would go seven times. Going around the earth in a circle, in one second, you can go how many times? 
seven times. What kind of speed is that? Not only that, for example, if you were to go or shoot that same bullet from here to where the moon is, it would take you only 1.3 seconds for that bullet to reach from earth to the moon. 1.2 seconds is hardly any time. Look at that speed, how, how vast the universe is. And in the same way, if you were to use the same bullet to aim at the sun, it would take you how long? Around 500 seconds. From here to moon is only 1.3 seconds. But at the same speed of 186,000 miles per second, aiming at the sun, 800, 8 minutes or around 500 seconds. Could you imagine how far the sun is from us? Now let's look at how large our sun is. You know how big our sun is? Sometimes when you look up and look at the sun, just like a small ball, maybe size of a football, maybe even bigger, sometimes even smaller. But how big it is? It is estimated that Earth, one million Earths can be put inside the sun. Earth is huge, isn't it? One million Earths can be put inside the sun. That big is the sun that you and I see in the sky, which, which, which just looks like a football or whatever. One million Earths? Can you imagine what that is? That's huge, the sun is. Besides being far away, our sun is huge. Now, we know that several planets revolve around our sun, creating what we call the solar system, our solar system. Now, light takes about 11 hours to cross our solar system. At what speed? 186,000 miles per second. At what speed does the light of the uh, at, at what speed does the, uh, it travel to the moon from here to moon? At the same speed in 1.3 seconds. But to travel across our solar system at the same speed the light would travel, it takes 11 hours. Could you imagine how vast is our solar system? Have you heard of Orion? Yeah? The constellation. It has a belt, it has a sword. The closest, the brightest star close to the constellation of Orion is, is what they have observed for some time in the night. It was, it was the brightest star that they have found. And when they try to observe what this brightest star is, they call this star Betelgeuse. And they try to understand how big this star Betelgeuse is. Do you know how big it is? Remember our solar system? The planets revolve around and as fast as light travels, it still takes eight minutes to reach Earth from the sun, which is in the center. For the light to go where the Earth is, it would take eight minutes. For the same light to travel up to the fifth planet, Jupiter, it would take 45 minutes. Now we are trying to understand how big this star Betelgeuse is. It says, this is the surface of the star Betelgeuse. You know how big it is? Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and Jupiter all could around, orbit around the sun inside the Betelgeuse. How big is our sun? One million Earths can be put into our sun, yeah? How big is Betelgeuse? Our sun and there are another five planets can all go inside this sun, sun called Betelgeuse. How huge that is! If our, our own sun can put one million Earths and you think this massive, imagine this star. It could swallow up our sun, our Earth, Mercury, Mars, Venus and Jupiter inside it. That huge it is. Betelgeuse and our solar system are as just tiny specks inside a galaxy like this. What do we call our galaxy? Milky Way, okay? So, in, as much as Betelgeuse is so huge, when you see in the night sky, it is like a tiny speck that you see. If suppose the Earth is, the universe is put on a disk and you could see a part of it, 
it would be something like this, which we cannot because of this, but how large is our Milky Way? Remember, the Sun, our solar system, the Orion and the Betelgeuse, they're all part of Milky Way, which is again in the sky as a tiny speck. Within the, how big is our Milky Way? Just the Milky Way itself, how big is it? Look at this. If you and your mom were on opposite sides of this Milky Way and you called her on the telephone, it would take you, how many? 100,000 years for her to answer and another 100,000 years before you heard her. In other words, if you're on both the opposite telephone side, hello mom, you said, this is just within the Milky Way of galaxy. You said, hello mom, and your mom is on the other side of the galaxy, Milky Way, and for your mom to hear the word hello mom at the speed of 186,000 miles per second, it would take 100,000 years. And for her to return back saying, hello my darling, hello my son or my daughter, another 100,000 years. This is not from one end of the universe to the other end of the universe. Just within the Milky Way, which is a tiny speck in the sky when you look up and watch. Can you even imagine what the size of the creation and the universe is? When this psalmist in Psalms 8 says, when I consider, when I look up to the stars, the sun, the moon and the stars, and I consider man, what is man? Those days, there was no telescopes. Those days, there was nothing. But the revelation of God has revealed to this man, he can't even comprehend what man is all about. It was in 1600s that the tel telescope was invented. Long before after what the Bible has said. And when the telescope was invented, all this, uh, they observed this sky, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. Within galaxy, 100,000 years, if you live 78 years, you feel, wow, too long. What do you mean by 100,000 years? Okay, using the speed of man's fastest space probe, it would take over 18,000 years just to get to the closest star. In other words, from where our sun is, our solar system, from there, if you want to travel to the closest star within our galaxy, at the speed of whatever the machine the man has made, rocket or jet or whatever you could think of, it would take you 18,000 years just to go from one star to another star. 18,000 years at the speedest probe of technology whatever man could use. If you were to use that with the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second, going from our solar system to the closest constellation, for example, Orion, it would still take you 1,500 years at the speed of light of 186,000 miles per second. 1,500 years to get from one star to another star within the same galaxy. From the time our Earth was created, about 6,000 years ago, until now, light from our sun would only have traveled about this far. That is, a, that is a disk of a galaxy called Milky Way. Huge! So far in 6,000 years, the light could have only traveled a tiny space, tiny distance, comparing to how vast the Milky Way is. To understand how big the galaxies are, you know, in this, galaxies are not rare. It's not just one or two galaxies. Each galaxy contains at least several billion stars. Even some of them hundreds of billions of stars. How many galaxies do you think are there? How many galaxies? Scientists using the Hubble Space Telescope looked here for 10 days to try and find out how many galaxies would be there. In a part of a sky about the size of a head of a straight pin held at arm's length. You know what, you know, have you seen a straight pin? Straight pins that you use to um, stick some notes in the bulletins or something. Straight pin has a small tiny head. They put the straight pin at the arm's length and looked into the sky 
and at the size of the tiny head of the straight pin, that's the only space they were looking at to see what they could find within the tiny space of a straight head pin. And within that tiny space in the sky, using that massive Hubble scope, they found how many? Thousands of galaxies. Within the space of a tiny straight pin head in the sky, within that space they found thousands of galaxies. Not stars, galaxies, just like a Milky Way, within a tiny space. And when you, when you look up in the sky in the night, you see so many stars, isn't it? Who knows that each little shining thing could be thousands of galaxies. It's not just a star. We are looking at galaxies that are in thousands and billions. Can you imagine what this universe God has created us? Now the question, when you consider how large the known universe is when compared to our little Milky Way galaxy, how large is the known universe? Milky Way is a tiny, tiny speck in the huge universe. And when you consider how large our Milky Way is in terms of the biggest known star in our Milky Way called Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is a tiny speck in a Milky Way. And then when you consider how large Betelgeuse is in comparison to our own sun, how large is it? Betelgeuse can swallow up the Earth, the Sun, and all the other Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, five other planets into its into its space. How big that Betelgeuse is. And again, when you consider how large our sun is when compared to our earth, how large is the sun when compared to earth? One million earths can be put into the surface of the sun. One million earths. That huge is the sun that you and I see in the day sky. And then when you compare how large the earth is when compared to who? When compared to man, stand on top of a mountain, just go across a half a mile or one mile and look at, let somebody look at you. How big do you look? How big do you look? It's just in the matter of a kilometer distance. So I'm sure some of you have flown. When you're in the aeroplane, when you look down, hardly any negligence, isn't it? until it comes closer. How big our earth is comparing to you standing in one corner and somebody have to look at you. So tiny we are. That's why the psalmist says, when I think, consider all these things, what is man? And then does, he doesn't stop there. What he says? Why does God even care about this tiny, tiny element? being in such a vast universe. In such a vast universe. Let's read this text again. When I observe your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you set in place, what is man that thou art mindful, that you remember him, the son of man, that you look after him. Look at what the scripture says about creation. John 1, 1 to 3, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, through Him. And without Him, nothing was made that was made. Everything that you see in the universe is created by God. Look at what God is saying about the power He holds. Isaiah 40, 12. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hands? That means God has power to hold all the waters of the whole entire earth in the palm of his hands and he can measure. Can you do it? Can you even think of how much of water, how much of the earth's surface is water? Hello? How much of earth's surface is water? 70%. Seventy-five percent, isn't it? 75% of earth's surface is water. Jesus, God is, say, God is saying, I can hold the entire water. Before the creation, what was there? Genesis 1, 1, 1, 2 and 3. It was the water. 
The whole, everything was covered. That's why it says he pushed water to a side and made land, isn't it? You all are looking at me as I'm, teach, I'm taking from Quran. It is in the scriptures. He pushed all the waters to one side and made a dry land. God is saying, I could take the entire water into my hands, hollow of my hands. Can you even imagine what that means? What kind of a God we are talking about? I want you to look at his greatness. Sometimes we limit God to our level. Not only to our level, even below our level and we expect him to treat us like how we treat one another. You can't even imagine what a mighty God we have. He says, who can measure the waters in the hollow of his hands? Measure heaven with a span. You take a span and you just measure heaven. Can you do it? God says, I can do it. And calculated the dust of the earth in a measure. God could take up every dust particle of the earth, put it in a scale, and he could measure. Can you do it? Is, was it Archimedes who discovered the weight uh, principle? I think he said, if somebody could help me to get outside of the earth, I could weigh the earth. Anybody can do it to put? No. God is saying, I can measure. And he says, the mountains, he says, I can put the mountains in a scale and the hills in a balance. Can you even imagine picking up the whole mountain and putting in a scale? God is saying, I can do that. God is trying to speak to man in human language so that at least we could get a glimpse of what, how powerful, how great he is. That's why he's trying to make human understand who, who he is, how great he is. And look at the next verse. Behold, the nations are as a drop in a bucket. You have a bucket in your house. If you put one drop of water in the bucket, it is almost negligible, isn't it? God is saying, to me, all the nations of earth is like a drop in a bucket and are counted as small dust in the scale. You know, if you have a scale, balance, sometimes we wipe it away. So a small dust particle on a scale is like how God, for God is the entire earth and humans. He could just wipe it away like that. He lifts, and it says, he lifts up the isles as a very little thing. All the islands, he can just lift it and push it aside. All nations before me are as nothing and they are counted by him less than nothing and worthless. How much is nothing? How much is nothing? Well, my common sense, my English tells me nothing means nothing. Look at what Christ, God is saying. All the nations in his eyes are how much? Less than nothing. Nothing is nothing. What is there less than nothing? This is a human language Christ, uh, God is trying to say, you are very, I don't know even how to put it into English. Nothing, you're less than nothing means you, you're nothing. Comparing to what I have and what I can do. And look at what he says. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. Can you imagine? God can sit on top of the earth. And its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, just flying in a plane around two kilometers above the surface of the earth. You don't even see human beings properly, isn't it? Very tiny, just a two kilometer. God is saying, when I look down from the surface of the earth, you look like grasshoppers to me. Maybe his eyesight is much better, that's why he could see clearer. If I were to go there, even with the good glasses, I can't see anything. And it says, and the inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. You know what that means? The whole sky you see, yeah? For God, he says, you have curtains in your homes, in your rooms. When you need some light, what do you do? You just pull the curtain. God is saying, I can stretch the sky like a curtain. Just close it, put it back. Hmm. And spread them like a tent to dwell in. When you go for Pathfinder camp, you put a tent. For God, he can put the sky like a tent and then take it back, use it like a curtain and, oh, I, I don't know, the, the kind of language God is trying to speak to make man understand how great 
he is don't miss friday night i'll tell you the reason i'm sharing this is to tell you friday night the second coming how long it takes for us to go what kind of things god has prepared for us but look at the power of god now look at the same text again when i observe your heavens the work of your fingers the moon and the stars which you set in place what is man that you even remember him look at this one when god wanted to create man he says let us make man in our image the entire creation has no resemblance to god except you and me my image i want man it is his initiation he took time to take the mud form the image that looked like him and to breathe his own life into that you are not an accident you are not a coincidence you remember your god's handy work sometimes we put ourselves slow i'm short i'm dark i'm not handsome i'm not beautiful i had those feelings all my life as a teenager as i grew up but let me tell you there is no one like me on this earth there is no one like me on this earth among 8 billion people if i'm standing among 8 billion people you will look at say that's pastor mohan you will tell i may be short i may be dark but there is no one like me because god created me special and unique i am in the image of my creator you need to be proud of who you are stop comparing with anyone you know you know what is one of the biggest industries that makes money in this world irrespective of recession or no recession money or no money it's the cosmetic industry people can go hungry but they can't go without makeup and other things <laughs> trying to prove what trying to prove what we need to be proud of who we are i am in the image of god is this the image of god in a distorted form because of sin but he is coming back to restore me to the original image that he intended for me until then be proud because god's image is in you so he took special interest in creating you he said to this vast universe how did he create let there be sun moon and stars he didn't say that to you he took the dirt in his hands and he shaped you and he shaped me you're special than this entire creation Adam and Eve he created in his image the scripture says put them in a beautiful garden and said but we know they messed up they ate the fruit did he leave it did he leave it i'm writing a book right now called god is not fair my first chapter is not fair it's just a piece of fruit how can you punish adam and eve just for eating a piece of fruit they didn't murder anyone and how can you finish for the first time if my child does a mistake first time i would say don't do it again give them a second chance how did god didn't give hopefully by it will come out soon and you could read it i'm trying to address the mindset of young people who think god is not fair how can he do this how can he do that anyway they ate the fruit and they have lost immortality they have lost their home but god didn't leave them as orphans He said if you t- the day you touch it you will die isn't it but did they die no immediate action that he took so that they don't die is to cut a lamb and offer a sacrifice so that Adam and he would not die he offered a sacrifice himself and immediately took the skin of that and clothed them and said you messed up but don't worry i will provide a way of escape and he himself came to die look at what paul says philippians 2 7 and 8 but jesus made himself of what no reputation and took upon himself the form of a what servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross 
for somebody that became a rebellion, you die for them? Look at this text, famous text. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God so loved you for what? You think he, he, he's got any benefit in loving you? It is his initiation to create you. It is his initiation to send his son. It is his initiation to die for you also. Everything comes from him, nothing from your side. Imagine there's a person who, who loves you unconditionally. Everything he or she does to you, not expecting anything back. How blessed you feel. That's what Christ did for you and me. You don't deserve it, but he did it for you. You didn't ask him to create you, but he created you. You didn't ask him to die for you, but he died for you. The scripture says, you didn't love him first, but he loved you first. So what is he expecting from us? Come now, let us reason together. Say the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. All that the Lord is asking you to do and me is what? Come to him as you are. Come to him as you are. I'm sure there are some of you who feel the need of coming to Jesus close to him. Come to him as you are. Let me tell you, young people, don't think that because you have some habits, you can't come close to God. Come to him as you are. You know what Jesus said to his disciples? He said, I will send you as fishes of men. Our duty is to catch the fish and bring them to Jesus. It is the duty of Jesus to clean them and take care of them. We don't clean the fish and take it to Jesus. You don't clean the fish. Sometimes our doctrines are wrong. We want to say, make sure you don't do this, you don't do this, you don't do this. Then you come to Christ. Then what is the point of coming to Christ? You come to Christ as you are because only he's got the power to cleanse you. He's got the power to clean you. He's got the power to redeem you. He's got the power to recreate you. No human being has that power. My duty is to catch the fish, take it to Jesus so that Jesus can clean it and preserve it. Come to Jesus as you are. And then let him clean you. Let him wash you. Let him save you. I hope this week you will make the decision to give your life to Jesus so that you become his product. Remember what the scripture says. Come to him as you are. When you consider this creation, what is man? But Jesus left every splendor of this heavenly universe and glory just for you and for me. Give your life to Jesus. God bless you.